Welcome folks to the Technivers channel and we thank you for joining us for another episode of 3D Thursday. Today we're taking a look at the specs for the ANET ET4X. Now this may just look like an ET4 with a blue paint job, but stick around and I'll show you why it's not, as well as why I think it may be ANET's best printer yet, today on 3D Thursday. Take a look at this print. Now this is straight off the printer. Uh, no cleanup. It's still a little bit rough. It could use a little cleanup. You'll see more of this later, but this print is amazing. Look at those overhangs. Now, right off the bat, let's discuss some of the differences between this and the standard ET4, its predecessor. So, uh, one of the major advantages I find with this machine is that it homes the Z-axis to the build plate. Whereas the standard ET4 used to home the, the Z-axis to the top of the gantry, which uh, wasn't really a big deal, but most of the Cartesian machines that I've dealt with proceed like this one, which is to lower it to the bed, which is where you're trying to level to anyway and makes a little bit more sense. This item that you're seeing here is what's known as a torture chest. Now it has a lot of really steep curves, it has some bridging in it, it has some overhangs, and it has some really fine details. And this is to kind of determine how well your printer can print such things. And there are a variation of tons of different torture tests out there that you can see. As you can tell, this one came out very, very nice. I will show you a close-up of this guy here in just a minute, and you'll see some of the bridging that we're talking about. This, in fact, turned out so well, I decided to do another torture test and that is this one here. Now this is the double helix torture test. Now keep in mind I did change some of the settings specifically I turned on bridge settings in Kira before I did print this test print but I am very very pleased with how it's come out. I'll let you just watch for a second as it bridges these amazing gaps. And as you can see, the bridging capabilities of this printer are pretty amazing. It's very capable. You will notice a little bit of drooping underneath some of these on the very first lines uh, earlier on in the model. And I'm not sure what caused that, but it should be easy to just clip them and remove them and not even notice that they were there and clean up. Still a very, very, very good bridge. And yep, there you can see a little bit of droopage under a couple of these. But uh, still, very capable machine, very, very nice prints, and I'm very, very happy with this right out of the box. The angle of that fan is pretty much perfect for part cooling and bridging, so that's nice. Oh yeah, I did the white parts of the Rick and Morty portal gun on last week's episode on this printer as well. As you can see. Alright, now back to the matter at hand, the ET4X. Now let's talk some specs. It has a pretty standard build volume for a printer of this cost and size, and it is 220 by 220 by 250. Now that is pretty much equivalent to the Ender 3. The extrusion system is a Bowden system, and it is a single nozzle extruder. Now the standard nozzle size is a 0.4 millimeter, but it does fit other size nozzles, which are available, and you can purchase them pretty much anywhere online. The maximum hot end temperature on this particular printer in the firmware is set to 250. There is no way to adjust the firmware with this ANET printer, so you're pretty much stuck with that until they have a firmware upgrade. So doing super high end temperatures aren't really going to work for you, although the bed does go up to 100 degrees Celsius, so these in combination should be fine for things such as PETG and ABS. So. The printed bed is actually a glass bed. It does ship with a glass bed, but it does also ship with a sheet of build tack, which you can apply either to one side of the glass, which will reduce the actual temperature of your bed and is not necessarily recommended, but then you can flip it and get kind of the best of both worlds, or you can apply that directly to the aluminum build plate underneath the glass. I myself go with just the glass and a glue stick and the clips that are included with these printers are actually pretty sturdy. They're little metal clips instead of the butterfly style that come with some of the other ANET printers I've seen. The frame is aluminum extrusion and all of the internal electronics are housed within a case at the bottom. All in all, it is a pretty beautiful machine and it comes with the LCD touchscreen with several options for preheating 
customizing, homing, and moving the gantry, things such as that, all of the standard movement that you would expect from printer firmware, and it's all presented in a nice graphical user interface. All in all, you can get this printer for about 250 bucks, depending on where you purchase it. I did put a link down below directly to Anet's purchase site. That's basically it for the specifications on this printer. And I wanna keep this video pretty short and sweet. It is just a simple review. And at the end of the day, the question is, should you buy an ET4X? And my answer is, if you've never tried an Anet printer, this one is probably gonna blow you away after everything you might have heard about them. It is actually a very, very high quality machine and it works pretty much flawlessly every time I go to use it. So can I recommend this printer? Yes, I definitely can. And if you'd like to give it a shot, as I said before, there is a link in the description below. Um, I also wanna put out there that I do have several models that I printed off of this. Some of them were the test prints, some of them were the models that you've seen throughout this video. And if you'd like to get a closer look at those, I will put a video up in the corner showing off some of my first test prints as well as some of the things that I've done since then. Um, other than that, that's going to be it, guys. Leave a comment down below if you think that there's something I might have left out when describing or talking about this printer or anything that you might want to know. And leave a thumbs up if you thought that that hand was pretty sweet because that's definitely one of the best prints that I've had come off of a stock machine before. That is uh, 3D Fuels Hemp and it is a very, very nice filament. It looks almost wood-like, and it somehow came out slightly translucent. You can kind of see the infill, but I really, really like the detail of the print, and I also achieved some very good luck with that particular filament on printing an iris box. So if you don't know what an iris box is, go check out that video on the successful prints I've had on this machine, and if you're thinking about checking out the ET4X for yourself, definitely do. As I said, it's, in my opinion, a vast improvement even though there were only some slight changes on the ET4. And I liked the ET4 to begin with, so that's saying something. Uh, I also really, really approve of the blue color powder coating instead of the red. Um, I didn't mind the red, I thought it was cool, it stood out, but the blue is definitely a little bit more subtle and I think a little bit cleaner. So thank you for stopping by guys. That's gonna wrap it up for 3D Thursday. Not quite sure what the topic's gonna be next week, but I guarantee you we will be here at 10.30 a.m. Central Time with another episode. So stay tuned and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode of 3D Thursday. Oh, wait, before you go, I had originally planned to do a almost double review of this and get you a second opinion from another YouTuber. And unfortunately, at the time of the making of this video, he still hasn't received his ET4X yet. We know it's coming, so he will have his own review video coming out later. So Sal, I'm sorry, I couldn't wait any longer. The Anet guys kind of wanted me to get this video out, but I will make sure and let you, my viewers, know when Sal posts his review so you can get a second opinion of this machine. And Sal, I think you're really, really gonna like it, man. Well, that's it guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers, and so far I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out, and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link, check out our Patreon link, leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.